What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today, we're going to be taking a look at another rules roundup from the lovely folks over at the Transformers trading card game. Yay! I love these rules roundup, I love that they do them, and I've put links to all the previous ones in the description for this video, so please do make sure you go check that out. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is cool. So there we go. So let's start off talking about Dreadwing. Dreadwing is a really fun card. It's one of the new combiners. It's a two-bot combiner. And what's really cool about Dreadwing is that you can have two weapons, two armors, and two utilities on Dreadwing. But that does lead to an awful lot of questions, and it's why this particular Transformer has turned up in a whole bunch of these rules roundups. What about Force Field? Force Field reads, if the upgraded character would take 5 or more attack damage, then instead you scrap this card and the upgraded character takes 4. Now remember, if they take less than 4, then it just goes through and Force Field does nothing. Or indeed, if it would do 4. But if it takes 5 or more, you scrap Force Field and save the character. It's a great way of keeping characters alive. I mean, if we look at something like Dreadwing here, it's got 24 health. So if you can use Force Field here, then your opponent is 5 hit KOing Dreadwing. And if your opponent is 5 hit KOing Dreadwing, you're probably on to a bit of a winner. But what happens if you've got two Force Field? Do they both get destroyed at the same time, or is it only one? The answer is, it's only one. Essentially, both the Force Fields try and apply, but you need to choose one, which then reduces the damage, at which point you only take 4 damage, the second force field goes, oh, oh, you're only taking 4 damage, that's cool. First force field brings you down to 4 and gets discarded or scrapped, second force field goes, oh, I'm not needed, cool. See you later, mate. There we go. And this is really, really good because it means you can use one, and then you've still got a force field on there for the next attack. Speaking of Dreadwing, what happens when your opponent is tapped out a new attack with Dreadwind and Combine at the end of your turn. So we've got Dreadwind and Blackwing, both of which have the same skill. At the end of your turn, if you have the other one in bot mode on the battlefield or in your KO area, scrap three cards from your hand. If you do, combine Dreadwind and Blackwing into Dreadwing Sky Destroyer. Cool. And Dreadwing says this begins untapped and has all damage from the combined characters. So what happens if your opponent is tapped out, you attack, and then you combine, but what happens in terms of the order? So you attack, you check if all characters are tapped, if they are, you untap them, then end your turn, and then you may combine. So you don't get to combine and essentially get an extra turn here. You do get to combine, and you do get to combine untapped, as with all the combiners, but the sequencing here is very important. You attack, then you check if all your characters are tapped. If they are, you untap them, then end your turn, then you combine. So if your opponent is all tapped out, they are going to all untap essentially before you combine. So you don't get to cheat an extra turn with Dreadwing. Boo! Would make Dreadwing quite a bit better if you could. So, another little question, and uh, we do get some of these simple questions before, but I know some people do worry, so I like to go through them occasionally, just very quickly. The minimum deck size is 40 cards. What's the maximum? There is no maximum number of cards allowed in your battle deck. Now, technically, there actually is, because you're only allowed three copies of each battle card. And there are a finite number of battle cards. So if you've got three of each battle card from Wave 1, Wave 2, the Metroplex deck, and the Devastator deck, which was just revealed, or just released, I should say, then that would actually give you a maximum deck size. So the maximum deck size will always be the number of unique battle cards available times by three. So there actually is a limit. But there is a technical limit based on how many cards are out. There is no theoretical limit. Similarly, somebody asked, if you run out of cards in your deck, do you shuffle immediately or wait until you have to draw or flip? 
you reshuffle immediately. The second you run out of cards, you immediately reshuffle your scrap pile and make a new deck. There we go. So if we've got Wheeljack in alt mode, it's a specialist. We then play Leap of Faith. Remember, Leap of Faith is that wonderful new card that essentially lets you play the top two cards of your deck. But what happens if you flip a field communicator? So you play it, but you play it on a specialist, Wheeljack, and because you put it on a specialist, you scrap the top card of your deck and you may play that card. And then, of course, we're in alt mode for Wheeljack here, so you've got an ability. When you upgrade one of your cards, draw a card, then scrap a card from your hand. So what happens? Do we fully resolve Leap of Faith? Or do we do what Field Communicator told us to do? Or do we draw and scrap a card? In what order does this actually go? Because in theory, we're still halfway through Leap of Faith. But we've now got to play this card with Field Communicator. But we've also got to resolve Wheeljack's ability. What's going on? You must fully resolve Leap of Faith. Field Communicator, and the second card you flip from Leap of Faith before you draw a card and scrap a card for Wheeljack. Essentially, Wheeljack's ability is separate to Leap of Faith. Leap of Faith is still going on. Field Communicator is part of playing Leap of Faith. So essentially here, after the Field Communicator, you scrap the top two cards of your deck, but you do have the opportunity to play either of them. You're scrapping one with Leap of Faith, one with Field Communicator. It really doesn't matter which is which, because they both do the same thing. And at that stage, you may then draw a card and scrap a card. Very nice. So let's imagine we're playing Turbo. That's where you just have two packs and combine them into a deck. So you likely have a very small deck. And one of the things about playing Turbo, you can legitimately run out of stuff in your deck because you've drawn a bunch of cards or attached a bunch of upgrades or whatever it might be doesn't really generally happen in constructed play but in limited it legitimately can so let's say we're rocking with drill arms drill arms reads when you put this on a character scrap an enemy armor if you can't draw a card so you've got a drill arms in play you draw the last card of your deck there is no scrap pile you play another drill arms on the same bot discarding the one that's already on there because remember when you put an upgrade on a character that's already got an upgrade you scrap the existing one and replace it there are no armors in place so you need to draw a card what happens next do you discard the original drill arms and then draw it when you can't scrap an armor or is there no card available to draw because the original drill arms has not yet gone to the scrap pile the answer is, in order to play the second Drill Arms, you first scrap the one that's already in play. This immediately becomes the only card in your deck. So when you use the ability of the new Drill Arms, that's the card you'll draw. Here's a fun one. I said that most of the time you're probably not going to run out of cards in your deck when you're playing Constructed Play. But let's say you do. Let's say you've got a really large hand, for whatever reason, you've been drawing lots, whatever it might be. Maybe you played a few equipment enthusiasts and you've got a bunch of upgrades down on the field. And let's say you're playing a Dinobot deck, so you've got Jaws of Steel and you've got Dino Chomp and you've used Grimlock. So, I mean, let's say you're rocking like Bold 10 or something like that. Well, what happens if you run out of cards in your deck while using Bold? The answer is, don't worry about it. Because like we saw earlier on, the second you run out of cards in your deck, you reshuffle your scrap pile and that becomes your deck. So even if you've only got two cards in deck, you can essentially just keep flipping those same two cards over and over again. So if you did have bold 10, you'd essentially flip both those cards five times each. Fingers crossed for a double orange. That would be awesome. But now let's assume there are zero cards in your scrap pile. If there are no cards in your scrap pile, there is no shuffle it up and it becomes your deck. That doesn't happen. Well, you can't flip. If you do not have any cards in your deck and you do not have a scrap pile to shuffle up and become your deck, then you cannot flip for bold. And in their whimsical way, they have written, you stop flipping and immediately regret holding on to so many cards. We saw that the second you run out of deck, you shuffle your scrap pile so you could potentially do that over and over again during the same attack 
But you can't do that if you don't have a scrap pile. And we do just have a little bit of a confirmation of the Sentinels. So, Sentinels, these are things like Hot Rod. It's not the Hot Rod I was hoping for, but it's the only Hot Rod we've got, gosh darn it, so it will have to do. And all these Sentinels, except for Optimus Prime is a bit different, have skills whereby if you flip them in the KO area, you get to do stuff. So for Hot Rod, when you flip it in the KO area, you do one damage to an enemy. Just a little bit of confirmation here. Firstly, you can flip characters in the KO area during your flip for the turn, but you cannot flip them with something like Rapid Conversion unless you are specifically told that the card allows you to flip it in the KO area. Combat Commands would be an example of a card that says flip a character in your KO area, but it's got to specifically say so or you can't. Regular characters can be flipped in the KO area, but only if you're flipped for the turn. But you do not get a when you flip to this mode ability. So if we take Megatron Arrogant Ruler, when you flip it into alt mode, you may play an upgrade. But if you flip it into alt mode when it's in the KO area, you do not get to play an upgrade. There we go. And actually, just to go back to drill arms very quickly, make sure opponent discard an armor. Do remember that in wave two, we got spare parts. And Spare Parts is a lovely little card that reads, if an opponent's card would cause a weapon or armor to be scrapped, scrap this card instead. Well, this is a classic, just take it very simply on face value. Drill Arms comes down, I'm going to scrap an armor. Spare Parts goes, uh, no, actually, I'm getting discarded instead. Did you scrap an armor? No. But you still don't get to draw a card because of Drill Arms. Because you kind of did scrap an armor. You didn't scrap an armor. You scrapped a utility. Let's be clear about this. But you scrapped a utility instead of scrapping an armor. And that essentially counts. So Drill Arms will not let you draw an extra card if spare parts comes in. How weird is that? Eh, not that weird. But it's one that I don't think was immediately obvious on the face of it. Good job we have these rules roundups. And don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back with these every single week for as long as Transformers do it. For the time being, tell me what you think about these rulings in the comment section. And please, if you would be so kind, go nuts, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about games like Transformers, but also a whole bunch of others. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.